Hello, my name is Jennifer. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marika. And, and this, this is, is Cass Chats. Pew pew for time Hello. Star Wars. Pew pew. <laughs> Seasoned therapists would be writing reports. <laughs> things, um, have you come across either mentoring or supervising or correcting? Oh, the reports. Oh, tricky one, right? Well, there's lots of things, I suppose, when it comes to report writing. Um, especially because I suppose yourself and myself would edit people's reports for them. So, not just the content, but the grammar and the consistency. Um, so, we would be red marking reports all over the place and um, and it's really helpful when people take our notes and then come back with the next report and we don't have to have those same issues again um, so I suppose there are things that we notice a lot that make our heads go um, yeah. because they happen over and over and over again yes because if there's continued errors and it's the same errors that you flagged before mm -hmm. it's just like is in a way you're kind of thinking if that is where you you're learning mm -hmm. and you're not changing because of a learning experience what else is it that you may be not changing but mm -hmm. also like we said before a report is a really permanent thing mm -hmm. like I don't know if you've come across it but it could be like 10 15 years later somebody says oh yeah I saw your name in a report from that year and you're like that the year I did really bad recommendations I can't remember yeah and you're right. going oh, oh my goodness yeah. oh you see it and you're like wow I yeah I've improved as a report writer over these past 20 years yeah yeah and, and that's that's the the thing but it's it's written information is so so important mm -hmm. because it's so permanent yeah and it's legal it's a legal mm -hmm. document and very often in court cases reports are the the legal documents mm -hmm. are being used so you need to expect at any point in time that your case notes or your reports can be taken into evidence yeah. for a court case because you don't know it yeah can, and it's not necessarily about you but it's about something else where Absolutely. it might come up but you need to have that in the back of your mm -hmm. mind isn't it definitely so i suppose the big thing and this is not grammar this is something else but subjective versus objective statements um, the child liked this. That is a subjective statement. The child was observed to engage in these behaviors is an objective statement. And I think that's child really important. showed an interest in exactly. the toy. He liked the toy different mm -hmm. because now you're assuming exactly. he liked it. Yeah. Right? And, and it's also, even this the tense it's written in. Yes. It's... The assessment happened in the past year, Therefore, right? In the past, past tense, right? Tense, yeah. Um, and then how you describe what's happened mm -hmm. needs to be done in a professional way, but mm -hmm. also clear. Mm -hmm. What I have a personal bugbear about is long sentences. They keep going. Yeah. And if you had to, usually I say to a student or the therapist to go, okay, can you read that sentence for me without losing? consciousness uh, <laughs> can you, you do it in one that? breath in one breath <laughs> keep going mm -hmm. because you didn't put any commas in either so there's mm -hmm. no even half breaths in here go for it mm -hmm. and if you can't do that then and then it also doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. does it it needs to be a bit more concise yeah and, and no report is perfect no right? no we we all read our reports again and go who hold on a sec but i think that's the important thing um from content is reading it the next day mm -hmm. and going through it again because if you write it and then send it off um even if you reread it right then your brain is still in the mode of that report so you're going to miss things because you're going yeah. to assume information but if you come back with a fresh brain after a nice sleep then you will actually pick up on the little errors or you you'll read it more critically and go wait this sentence doesn't actually make sense i need to reword it you almost need to read it out loud mm -hmm. uh, i mean um even pretending you're reading it out mm -hmm. loud makes a big difference but that's yeah. 
timing that even to take an hour or two and come back to it, mm-hmm. you get a brain break and it, it works a bit better. But that's why reports take so long. Mm-hmm. That's why a really good report is blood, sweat and tears. Yeah. <laughs> really? But after that, you should be able to read it and go, I know what are their strengths mm-hmm. and what they need to work on. Yeah. And anybody reading that report should be able to do the therapy. And yeah. if you can't do that, that's not a good report. Yeah. And anybody reading it should understand it, even if it's a parent. I think that's a big thing. We like to use all this jargon, and then an SLT reading it will get it. But often we are writing the reports not necessarily for another SLT, but for the parents. And so we have to not just use self, but we have to say the clinical evaluation of language fundamentals, fourth edition, UK or fifth edition. We have to point, put that out there. We have to watch out for terminology that doesn't make sense to a non-SLT or a non, uh, mm. early interventionist. Um, so you really have to watch out for that. Um, you also have to wa- watch out for how you're writing things. Like um, sometimes when we're especially in the sections on say the medical history or the background we often use we forget pronouns i suppose now there's a lot of issues on pronouns nowadays but um but if a child will go if a child is identifying as boy um and their pronouns are he him then let's say or we're going to use joe because he's here joe is uh a boy a boy (laughs) Uh, Joe this, Joe that. Every sentence starts with Joe. And um, it's a very stilted report if I'm reading it. Uh, Joe is a boy. He lives here. Um, His mother said this, that, and the other thing. And then go back to the name Joe. Rather than saying Joe, Joe, Joe. I like to do it like every third or fourth sentence. Mm -hmm. Change back to the name and then do pronouns again. Because that reads more naturally, doesn't it? Yeah. And if you have to, if you're editing and changing, copying, changing, you have to go back and just double check that you go and change that, mm-hmm. that it has that same, it needs to have a rhythm, isn't it? Exactly. You need it's to the read the rhythm of the paragraph, rhythm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it needs to flow, that the content needs to make sense, mm-hmm. that you're talking about the background, mm-hmm. what, sh- what you saw within the, the session mm-hmm. and, and what variables were present at the time that might impact yeah. on the assessment what tools did you use why did you use them yeah and here are the results and where do we Strengths go from here and challenges mm-hmm. not just here are the things they're going to yeah. do and then yeah okay what are you saying yeah for me the biggest problem is when a therapist summarizes and they don't give a summary about the speech and language is mm-hmm. it mild yeah. Well, is there mild delay? Is it a disorder? Uh, you know, is it uh, to what severity? There's a fear. If you can't say the severity, yeah. did you? Why you use standardized tools, didn't you? Mm-hmm. So how can you not put a severity on it? And if you can't, you need to I th- motivate that. I think there's a fear, especially in uh, young therapists, of of putting a label and putting a severity on, especially if we have standard scores that are pretty significantly low to have to say this what we're looking at is a severe language disorder expressive language disorder or uh, if we're querying de- developmental language disorder you know putting that in the report justifying it um, we have a fear of freaking out parents we don't want to hurt parents feelings yeah, but wouldn't it freak you out as a parent if they don't get to the point what mm-hmm. is what is the issue yeah and what is the degree of the issue yeah. is it just an r and s then it's mom yeah do you know but if there's a, a severe speech sound disorder then we need to say that because yeah. sometimes that means they might get more resources in mm-hmm. schools the, you know what the impact of that report yeah. is quite significant and sometimes schools will say no you're not getting placed in language class or you're you're not going to get access to mm-hmm. learning support in school because the report yeah. doesn't state that you have that exactly you need. and that's why it's so important to put in that severity and um especially if i'm writing a report where i think this child might be a good candidate for a language classroom um or extra supports i do state specifically if the score is more than two standard deviations below the mean Mm -hmm. and i spell that out because the ceno might read that and go ah i understand what that means this child needs the support um so i that's something that i'm 
always putting in there. And I do spend the time talking through with the parents as well. So, mm-hmm. uh, so it's not all just doom and gloom, severe, severe, severe. Um, and we we have to put in the 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 challenges as well as what the child is really good at doing. I think that's important yeah. Yeah. to talk about the positives as well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. Um, I suppose from a grammar point of view. Um, okay. Uh, I've noticed that the word however. Ooh, that's precisely the <laughs> word I was thinking of. However. I rarely put the word however in my reports. Yeah. Um, however, I read it a lot in mm-hmm. other people's reports. Mm, possibly. With the, without the wrong punctu- with the wrong punctuation. With the wrong punctuation. You know, mm-hmm. if you're going to put it in the middle you know, however, for the most part, goes in the middle of a sentence. Not always, but most of the time. Most of the time. It's not and technical writing if you put a conjunction or something like that at the start. Exactly. You don't start saying with because. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So if you're going to use however, you have to have the semicolon, however, yeah. comma, comma, space, the rest of the sentence, yeah. connecting to the, to the yeah. sentence previous. Yeah. That's the same as therefore. You know, uh, and I think... And, and if you don't use it in your spoken language yeah don't use it in a report over and over yeah. and over again actually go and read through your report and see can you find your speech and language therapist look up uh, in the thesaurus other words that mean the same thing yeah than however mm-hmm. or <laughs> it, that one's overused yeah. isn't it, it is and i'll sometimes read it four or five times in one paragraph yes and it's just the the person writing the report is just so comfortable with that style that i'm often um bringing them that attention and once they get it they're like oh okay i am doing this quite a lot i have to watch out for that um but i don't use however i don't use therefore in my yeah daily life that often you know some people might in their verbal language Mm -hmm. say like a lot Mm -hmm. yeah i like i really like saying like like um but in reports i don't want to be saying it exactly but I don't use however and therefore, mm-hmm. but apparently it's something that speech and language therapists use a lot based mm-hmm. on their written yeah, reports, yeah. right? Definitely. And I'm always encouraging people to read back and watch out for redundancy. Mm-hmm. So often yes. in a paragraph or in just one section in, say, you've got two or three paragraphs, you'll have the same word multiple times. And that's where the thesaurus is really helpful to look yeah. at. Uh, can you use a different word here? So you always yeah. want to read back and say, you know, I've noticed I've said this word yeah. multiple times. Or can you be more concise and mm-hmm. put this simpler Yeah, in one sentence? Mm-hmm. And rather than three sentences that say nothing at all, really. Exactly. You know? So that's why report writing is hard, right? Absolutely. It's not easy. Yeah. We even talked about headers. <laughs> and underlining. <laughs> Don't underline punctuation. No, 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 no. The colon need to be free. Free the colon. Free no the colon. underline. Don't underline them. <laughs> I find a personal bugbear, but I mm-hmm. freak out when I see that. To me, it's yeah. just lazy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe we're kind of grammar freaks. We're, um, so, we're so picky. Even um, uh, like E, G, I, E, E, X. Abbreviations and without abbreviations. the punctuation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not putting them in the parentheses yes. uh, or the quotation marks. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, you need to write it out, comma, for example. Exactly. Not E.G. as to be captured in brackets yeah. because it's a wild animal. A point to get away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. E dot G dot comma. And number your pages <laughs> so that people can later on, when they're photocopying it for whatever reason, know mm-hmm. what order it is in. Or if something's missing. So one of six. You know, our yeah. reports are very often eight, nine pages, right? Mm-hmm. Easy. Um, so one of one of six, two of six, and have the name of the client on there, and make yeah. sure it's their name. Yes, please read, please. Yeah, if you're it going hurts to select a parent all. really badly when, even though it's just purely you, you, it is really their kids' report. There's mm-hmm. nothing that is from somebody else, mm-hmm. but it's just purely that you made a mistake and how something's mm-hmm. copied over. You yeah. need to have somebody else read through it. That's yeah. a therapist. Just to glance through it because sometimes you miss it. Absolutely. Always have somebody else have that glance. Look at it yourself the next day to make sure that everything is where it's meant to be. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Oh, I suppose the, uh, the, the, the parentheses and punctuation. I wonder if we have different styles. No, I think we're about the same. 
Like commas Similar. and, and yeah, full yeah. stops have yeah, to be yeah. inside the. You're more about caging them in. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's sometimes I mean, that was how sometimes I learned Sometimes the quotation it. for me, it's it's flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm not as freaked out about that. I'm more freaked out about the semicolon uh, <laughs> and the colon being free. Um, <laughs> that's a bugbear. But um, I I'm, I'm, I understand mm -hmm. that Irish therapists didn't have grammar in school, yeah. where we were taught mm -hmm. English grammar bit by bit mm -hmm. this is how you do it this is how you use yeah. punctuation so i know it's really hard yeah when you've not had that background with it Absolutely. so it comes a bit a bit easier but i suppose if it's consistent mm -hmm. i'm if i see it and it's consistent then i generally let it go because it's consistent yeah um if it's not then i i flag it um, yes that's a big deal mm -hmm. things chop and change yeah throughout the report yeah. And it looks like 15 different people wrote it. Exactly. Mm. Or the, the font changes or the size changes yeah. or the headers aren't consistent. I mean, I always, I'm always looking at the end. I'm scanning it just to say that it looks consistent. Yeah. Formatting is important yeah. because that's what makes something look professional. professional. Because just think of it. Mm -hmm. Years later, that report might appear again going, yeah. ta-da! Yeah. Ghost of reports past. <laughs> so what about recommendations? Ooh. How many recommendations should be at the end of a report? I think it depends on the difficulties. If there mm -hmm. are no difficulties, yeah. you can say discharge, discharge. met goals, mm -hmm. um, or referral to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it can sometimes be two or three. Yeah. But if there is a significant disorder or difficulty or so on then you need a number of recommendations mm -hmm. first of all i like to put referrals first yes so it's outside people first yeah and then to say okay you need speech and language therapy state that and then say what are the kind of things that need to mm -hmm. be worked on you don't necessarily need to right, say what the, the approach is yeah. because each therapist might choose a different type of approach mm -hmm. but if you know you've tried something and you know it works and they're stimulable for it note it and then give some parent support yeah. tips and what can parents do to help their child mm -hmm. while they're waiting for something because so often they're set, stuck on waiting lists not knowing how to help their child yeah. and really desperately wanting to so add some tips and then put some appendixes in with mm -hmm. ideas and tips and tricks you can add loads of things mm -hmm. if you want to or email loads of things yeah. that they can try and, and talk them through no i completely agree i think um you know, parents are waiting. They want to know what they can do to help. So I like to have recommendations. Um, you know, absolutely, I'm the same. My first thing is, do they need speech therapy or not? The second thing is, what what um, what referrals need to be made and why? Um, and then I get into the nitty gritty of, are there certain really many things, or do I feel an SNA is necessary, mm -hmm. um, or extra supports in school? I might add that in. Um, or uh, I might suggest a names worker if it's preschool child. Yeah. Um, although a lot of that can be accessed without a report now, which is great. I still like to put that in. For yeah, the state, state all the things they need. Yeah, if, you, yeah if they need yeah. it, put it in the recommendations. Um, as well as little simple things. Like I might talk about the, the use of visuals and how you can use visuals. And I might add some visuals to, to show that. Um, or if I feel, say, it takes two to talk or more than words or some other kind of parent training might be mm. beneficial, that might be helpful for, say, the, the HSC therapist might read that and go, oh, great, this is a nice conduit for the child while they're waiting for mm. intervention from us. We can, we can put them into a parent training support yeah. group. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's key, isn't it? Once yeah. You, once you write a good report, you can actually get those supports mm -hmm. that they need. Yeah. So we're yeah. telling a story, really, in, in our reports from the, the background all the way to current recommendations. And I think the assessment, the report has to look like yeah. a story is being told. So you have to look at that. Where are you jumping around and can, can yeah. make it more of a chronological yeah. timeline, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. So, so in essence... You just need to rock that report. You need to. And, rock and don't that forget your core number at the end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like a ta-da at the end. Yes. <laughs> Whew. I think we got it all. <laughs>
send in your questions and we'll try our best to answer them.